Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one third of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth. In the Milky Way galaxy, I'm fully faxed, waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. And with me, as always, is Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, uh, with her dog who's bugging the fuck out of her right now <laughs> at her knee whining. But that is not the special guest that we have on today. We have a very special de- gentleman that is with us today. Unfortunately, his beautiful, lovely co-host could not make it today, but hopefully we'll be able to connect with her in the future. Um, these two have recently come on to the, I guess, mainstream podcast um, community earlier this year, though they could have been doing stuff beforehand. And I'm just a snobby Canadian bitch that doesn't know anything. And maybe they have. <laughs> um, he is a DJ. He looks like not even over 40 he's like super good looking by the way as well too and looks super young so props to him um he is turn- currently doing the podcast and i always mess up this name so i'm gonna get scott to say it for me the internal the eternal darkness of the not so spotless, spotless mind. mind which i love the movie by the way that is an That's excellent it. film um he has been on controllers up cards down he is charming he is clever he loves art the clown so he's definitely high in our books he is mr matt wood thank you so much for joining us matt thank Thank you very much for having me, guys. Wow, what an introduction. That's beyond, <laughs> well beyond anything I was ever expecting. So thank you. It's very kind of you having us. Oh, I say us, it's only me. Well, <laughs> Kate's here in spirit. We're 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 he channeling is. Kate. Unfortunately, can't Kate works for cinemas. Um, what cinema chain does she work for? Is there a big chain in, in we can't the UK? say we can't oh. say, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, uh, just wow. uh, just just for work purposes, yeah, she's not allowed to say so. Are you wow. fucking kidding me? No. Nope. <laughs> I know, really I know, funny. absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I can't say. All right, but, well, uh, that's fine. She works for a cinema, by the way, everybody. Yeah, some can't cinema. Say which one. It's a big it's, chain. That's all I can say. It's an underground cinema. Mm. And Kate makes all the movies for them. Yeah. So that's why. <laughs> you know Censor? That movie's about Kate. Kate's the main chick from Censored. That's she what is. all she comes is down indeed. to. Yeah, right? yeah. So, well, Kate, she, yeah, she can't make it today, but. Yeah, because the cinema that we can't talk about doesn't is making her work. Sounds like they're a really great employer. So, um, <laughs> but much love to Kate. Uh, you can definitely check out Kate on Matt and her podcast as well. She's done tons of work on Summer Series as well as The Dark Parade. She is currently doing, I think it's, what is it? The Dark Parade Romantic. Uh, the Dark Parade. Uh, now, I just gave the show a shout out last week. And I oh my can't God, even... we're such assholes. The Dark Parade with Bo Ramsdale. She has done That's two one. wonderful extrafuls, um, two episodes with him um in regards to heart of darkness romance, heart of darkness in oh, regards to darkness. in regards to uh romance and horror so please check out kate on those podcasts she's absolutely fabulous um and it's always great to have another powerful beautiful female uh in this community so much love kate i know you said you were going to be listening and we're sorry you can't be here with us today but we're going to turn to your your side piece matt and now find <laughs> out <laughs> a little more about him so matt why don't you tell us our, your story how did you get involved in horror well uh, well it, basically i think it, it all started when i was about eight years old um my i've got two older brothers who used to hang out uh with their friends and i used to have to go with them when the parents their and their parents would go out drinking and then we'd basically sort of stay overnight and stuff. And the first film that I was kind of introduced to, to horror wise, was The Evil Dead. Nice. <clears throat> nice. Uh, so, yes, I was only eight at the time and it absolutely scared the crap out of me. Um, and it really, really stuck. I mean, I'll never forget when, um, you know, what one of the uh, the witches or what demons stabs, stabs the, uh, you know, stabs the pencil in the ankle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was such a gnarly scene and it, it just really stuck with me. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so scary. And it lasted with me for weeks and weeks. And I basically I got I just wanted more from, from you know, if you believe it, from eight, just wanted to see more. Um, we'd always have Jaws was always a, a family movie that that was always on our VHS. So, yeah, I used to watch that all the time. So it just kind of stemmed from there, really. Just a real love of anything, anything scary. I just loved being, you know, having the, the shit scared out of me, basically. 
Love it. Love it. And I love that you got dropped off while your parents went out drinking. That was actually my favorite yeah, part yeah, of the story. Well, <laughs> I, I, yeah, it kind of runs in the family. Hey, you know what? That's called having good times. That's what that's called, right? Absolutely, yeah. Living I'm, your I'm best sure life. Right? Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and uh, how did you get into podcasting? Is this your first podcast or am I just completely unaware of the talent that you had? It is our first podcast and mine and Kate's. Basically, we kind of got together through list, both listened to uh, another podcast called The Podcast Under the Stairs, yep. which I'm sure everybody's heard of. That's Doug and Felicia's podcast. Um, I started to listen to that in 2017, I think. Um, and Kate was about the same sort of time. And we just kind of built a friendship um, over there just through our mutual love and hate of certain films. For example, I hated Mother. Um, she absolutely loved it. And <laughs> we basically started slagging each other off uh, because of nice. that film and having mass arguments. Uh, but then, we, you know, it was a, a friendship built around that, almost around that abuse that we, that we shared. <laughs> kind of like Heather uh, and I. <clears throat> I feel exactly, that. Exactly. You guys got exactly the same sort of vibe going yeah. on. Yeah. So, which is great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I thought it was a swig of juice here. Juice or beer? Be uh, honest. It, it is. Well, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's Coke, actually. But never mind. Coke no, I'm, because I'm full of cold, I've, I've been trying to be good. Nice. Just trying. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, anyway, we, yeah, basically, it was me who came up with the idea. I sort of said, you know, do you fancy doing a podcast? And I asked her and I asked somebody else, Jamie McCauley, if he was interested. Uh, he was uh, a little bit interested, but then he kind of, Actually, he said, look, I can't, can't really commit to that. So, but Kate was always interested. Um, and this is uh, probably about two years ago. And me being a lazy so-and-so, I never really... We had all the ideas, we were throwing them together, and it never really materialised till pretty much basically when COVID hit. And then obviously everybody was kind of sat, you know, twiddling their thumbs. I thought, well, this is the prime opportunity to get off my ass and do mm -hmm. something um, and get on with it. I mean, I know there's... There are hundreds of horror podcasts out there uh, and some great ones. And, uh, you know, we're not trying to compete. We're just basically just doing our own thing. And just because we enjoy talking about it, um, just thought, well, look, let's just give it a go. And if people want to listen to the show, then that's great. If they don't, then, hey, it's no sweat. But we're just doing it because we enjoy enjoy doing it, you know. And, and the support's been, been great. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's where we are. So it's just basically... That's how it all kind of came together, really, just throwing stuff together. And but you know, we're still learning. We're still uh, probably needs a lot more work than <laughs> than either of us can can uh, put to it. But you know, we're doing all right. I think. I think we're doing all right. I think when I listened to your first episode, I really got the sense that you guys liked each other. And to me, that is the most important thing is chemistry. Yeah, and you yeah. guys have chemistry. And I think that's what carries you through any podcast, any gen any any podcast in general. You can tell when hosts generally like each other and generally are comfortable with each other. And I think that's really shines out with you two. I love the perspective both of you bring. You're not afraid to share your opinions, uh, whether they disagree or not and I think you have a lot of fun together and I'm I'm glad you joined the podcasting world and I think the attitude you have mirrors what Scott and I have uh so maybe I'm yeah, a little biased so. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right but I I really think that and also you know for Kate another female voice coming in there is very few of us um it's always nice to have another one uh share the airwaves yeah as well. yeah sure. so um yeah, thank you. so yeah you guys are great i think you guys are are hammering away and i and the name how who came up with the name of the podcast well <laughs> this is quite funny we were we were really struggling uh to to, to find a name uh there were some really stupid things uh one of mine was i was gonna call it the necronomic cunt but, uh, I like that. That should have fucking that would have been <laughs> but um yeah, I don't think Apple would have uh, accepted that one. So no. Uh, no, probably not. Uh yeah, there was also uh the beer bitch project. <laughs> nice. I like that. Um that's good. Just some really dumb ideas, but it just didn't yeah. I don't know. It just makes it Kate put it out to like basically anybody who was listening, said, look, we're really struggling to find a name. Um and it was, it was basically Jamie, Jamie McCauley 
suddenly came up with the idea about two o'clock in the morning. Um, so I said, oh, what about something along the, um, you know, eternal darkness of not so spotless minds? We're like, hey, that sounds perfect. You know, complete play nice. on the on, on the other film. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's basically how, how we, you know, how we went with it, really. Um, nice. And then uh, Darren Wilson came in with the the imagery for it. So, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah, that's right. Props awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Darren's a really, like, Darren always listens to everybody's show. He is someone that is, I think, the backbone of supporters and a very yes. intelligent man. Very, um, yeah. Beyond intelligent, actually. So, um, yeah, he's he's a very supportive person. So I'm glad he helped you guys with the imagery and stuff. But what you guys had together is awesome. I hope you continue it for as long that it's fun and as long as it works and you have a good time. Um, I I loved your live video. I did watch the entire thing uh, when you guys went live. Obviously, not when you went live. I had to watch the recorded just because of time differences when okay, we were at the yeah, film yeah. festival together oh that's right yeah yeah we, but i we, really we, enjoyed that i really enjoyed the two of your banters back and forth like i remember saying to scott i'm like we'll go live too but it'll be like us being like what? and it was like it was us <laughs> yeah. just talking about our, like fucking hand we were and the yeah. fatties we just smoked and like because awesome. marijuana is legal here in canada so i can walk anywhere and buy a joint and buy edibles and it's legal for scott in michigan Perfect. right so we're very open about what we well i'm very open about what i choose to consume and i just pull scott into it um <laughs> rightly so rightly so right yeah. right um so i do hope to see more live videos of the two of you in the future if you yeah I mean, i'm sure we will do i mean I, I don't know when we'll meet up next um maybe i know fright fest are doing something in in glasgow in march uh which um you know duncan mcleish and a few of the other uh, nice pod- pod- podcasters will be going up to so maybe might be able to make that. Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, we'll, we'll be meeting up again soon. Awesome. Sure. And I was going to ask too, like how far away are you and Kate from each other where you guys live? Uh, about an hour's drive. Oh, okay. That's so not, not, not too far. Not too yeah, that's far. not bad at all. Right. So That's because yeah. Scott thinks England's like a small little oh. island. He doesn't <laughs> have any concept. Oh, of I, I mean, I am American. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Scott knows. <laughs> Scotty knows. Scotty knows. Yeah. Scotty knows. Uh, <laughs> Scotty knows. <laughs> but thank you so much for being here with us no, today. Thank you. Um, we thank really you do us. appreciate it. And we're excited to go through our list. So um, our top five list today for our listeners will be any uh, top five Christmas slash winter horror films. As always with our list, we have no fucking rules. You think it's a horror movie? We'll go with it's a horror movie. You think it happens around Christmas time or it's wintery? We go with it. We're all about freedom of expression here on Friday Nightmares. All right. What you want to the table. We'll discuss it. We have a good time. So Scotty will kick us off with his number five. Better not be fucking gremlins. <laughs> well, I already said, I already told you my top five is nothing but gremlins. <laughs> That's all it is. Gremlins, 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 gremlins. <laughs> uh, but now my number five, I am going to start. Uh, I kind of did a mix of Christmas and winter for this one, since we we're kind of like the topic. So I kind of interspersed them all between each other. Um, but as always, I, I kind of did, uh, you know, some of the more popular ones that people may expect of me. I left off the list, though there are some that I, of course, sprinkled in as well. Like, I'm trying to mix it up a little bit here. But uh, the first, uh, for my number five, I ended up going with one that obviously is definitely a Christmas horror film that is well known in the community. And that is Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1984. Mm-hmm. I just freaking Never heard of it. Movie. No, no <laughs> one's ever heard this movie. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just love this, the whole, uh, Santa being the killer, like just the, this is like a, you know, very dark character study on like abuse and like trauma. Mm-hmm. And like, when I first watched this, I watched it as a slasher and I'm going, well, this is just kind of a unique slasher. It's like very slow to get to the get go. And it kind of expands this character's whole life. And then as I got older and started watching it more, I'm going, wow, no, this really covers a lot with trauma and like not being dealt the trauma not being dealt with and just like the crap this poor kid poor kid gets put through it's like no wonder he fucking snaps and does what he does because yeah he just had people that just didn't give a shit about him at all and like it's got amazing kills but it's also just like a very good study of character and i love that about this film i just talked about it yesterday on slumber party massacre which is another podcast i it's my side it's my side <laughs> chick side piece. podcast that i do and we talked about how like billy is an antagonist and a protagonist mm-hmm. it is such an interesting character shift that this kid just goes through so much fucking trauma 
And then like, he kind of, you kind of see that part in the store where he's kind of coming around and, you know, he's drinking the milk instead of the wine. I love that scene where they, one guy offers some wine and like, he's like, no, I got my milk. I'd be like, give me the fucking wine. Um, <laughs> but especially in retail, right. Especially in retail. But yeah. I, I agree, Scott, I think, and the, the tobogganing kill and then um, the kill with the deer head, like it's a great film. It really is. Good shot. Yeah. yeah. It's one like, uh, I'm glad that like, what was it? Scream Factory brought it out with like all the cutout kills being re-edited into the film. Like you can obviously tell like that was like the VHS quality tr- difference, but at the same time, like I'm glad they added that back in there because it just like adds to like the horror factor and just kind of builds up more of the story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that about the Scream Factory. Yeah, I, I believe it was Scream Factory that did it. Like might've been before that too, but I think Scream Factory like is the one that kind of cleaned up the edits a little better. Very good, very good. I and, see um, you're a fan, Matt. You've seen it. Uh, I've, you know what? I've seen half of it. <clears throat> oh, did you watch part two? <laughs> no, I, I watched half of it and I, I passed out. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like a good night. I don't know. Like, what's the problem? It's all right. Here, we'll spoil it for you. Santa kills everyone. The end. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> So yeah, I was basically halfway through and yeah, I was already, yeah, had a bit of a skin fall and uh, yeah, didn't watch the rest of it, unfortunately. Man, Matt, if we lived in the same country, Uh-oh. we would be dead. Danger. <laughs> like seriously, dude. Like they'd be like, these two cannot hang out together anymore. Oh, geez. It right. will happen one day. It will happen. I do plan on coming to um, England is my is the place I want to go visit the most in the world. I'm not kidding. Really? Oh, but it well, is. We'll, I have Welsh we'll, heritage, so I want to go back oh, to... We'll come and look after you, definitely. Oh, yeah, I'll visit with you and get you better fucking believe I will. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> I'll find you. Um, <laughs> on that note, Scott, did you want to add anything else about Silent Night, Deadly Night? Uh, nope, I think we pretty much covered it. So, yeah, we can pass it over to Matt and get All his right, number Matt. five. Right, well, my number five is a film from 1974. Now, has this given you any clues? Mm. Is it Canadian? Mm. By Bob Clark. Does that ring any more bells? <laughs> Just a few more bells. <laughs> I hope I'm not taking anybody's number one or number two or number three or number four, or maybe they're number five, but it's Black Christmas. Awesome. Now, I've got to uh, be honest here in that I only watched it this week. Believe it or not, I've wow. seen I've seen the 2019 uh, <laughs> remake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that was something else. Um, yeah, less we talk about that, the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it's but yeah, 1974 is Black Christmas. Now, was this the original slasher? I think people consider this like the original. Yeah, it's a what is it called? Proto slasher stuff. Yep, proto slasher is what yeah. I've heard to be tossed around too. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. See, I mean, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I, I love the aesthetic. I love the whole setting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gives it a real great Christmassy vibe. Um, you know, you really feel it. You can feel, you know, with, um, oh, God, what's what's the actress's name? Uh, Margot Kidder when she's... Oh, yeah. She's basically <laughs> prowling around looking for drinks. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. That's that's basically me just knocking drinks back all the time. It's just I just love the setting. It's just mm-hmm. got a real kind of uh, sorority. Everyone's getting getting drunk and getting that Christmas vibe. Um, and then you got this this weird, really creepy dude making the most weirdest noises down the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's scary. Yeah, it's also I don't know. It's just so just so weird. Isn't it? Just it is way. weird. It is super weird. Like if you got calls like that, and we gotta remember 1974, no caller ID, none of that shit. So you're just hearing fucking breathing on the phone. Oh, and that'd be creepy the, as fuck, right? D- and different voices. Mm-hmm. Like I've been speaking. Mm-hmm. You know, and then just some weird noises. It's just it, great. I loved it. Um, what else can I say about it? Um, just uh, yeah, yeah, some really good, good kills. I love. Uh, I would like to have seen a bit more actual, not off screen. That's probably yeah. one thing I would like. I'd like to see a bit more on screen. There's a lot of like, you know, uh, like the very first kill where, where the girls are up in the attic and gets her face wrapped in the, in the cling film. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> well, if, yeah, well, you saw it last week for the first time, but most people have seen it. But well, if you well, haven't, yeah. you spoiled it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, everybody. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a classic. Um, and I'm sorry that I've only just got around to watching it this week because I think it's it's definitely one that I'll watch in future. 
Awesome. That's awesome. definitely uh, a, one of the Christmas traditions for me around the, uh, around here. I always love watching that around this time of year. I also Scott like- Scott loves the... watching sorority girls get killed this time of year. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, it's fucking Christmas. Let's kill some bitches. <laughs> it, it fits perfectly. And I, and I also say I am also a fan of the 2000, I think it's 2006 remake, the Black Yeah, that's fun. It's fun. It's fun. That one's one. just straight up. A, that one's just straight up like you know, a modern age slasher. I love that. Very one. 2060 Ooh. slasher. But yeah, 1974 canadian classic black christmas lots of canadian actors in it um actresses uh very and a little bit of a social commentary about pregnancy and abortion and yeah and female no, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah stuff going on there right it's and it's a great subtle creepy horror some people find it boring some people are not a fan uh, i am definitely not that person i agree with you matt i think it sets up a very good creepy ominance and and the killer is is disturbing yeah. it's a very disturbing film so it's yeah, awesome definitely, definitely somebody who's who's got <laughs> mental issues right absolutely just, just, just being played out over over the telephone really it's yeah crazy. absolutely so, there we go solid solid pick so thanks for bringing it to the table yeah um i'm gonna go with maybe one that's less known i don't i don't know if this is super well known or not emily blunt was in this film back in <laughs> 2007 and it is wind chill uh this is a first time watch for me this year i've heard about it derek b shout out to derek b he was the one who talked about it first that i had heard talk about it. i'm sure other people have but i heard that derek spoke about it and uh basically it's about a girl and a boy and they aren't given names they're just called girl and boy and you and the girl is looking to go home for christmas she does a ride share thing with this dude and they take off, uh, they're driving home just before Christmas, a winter storm hits and they get into an accident and things unravel from there. Uh, this is a very much a supernatural movie mixed with relationships. There's a very deep in story. Um, you can give spoilers in this, you know, people should know there's spoilers that we give for some of our movies. There are ghosts involved in this and, and some complex ghost stories on top of it. And you can feel the cold. There's a couple yeah. other movies on mm -hmm. my list. One in particular, where if you watch it, you feel the cold. And I don't know how cold it gets in England. What Celsius do you guys get down to? Celsius, Scott. <laughs> uh... I'd say the coldest, I mean, at night, minus eight. Okay. So, I mean, okay. it, get, it does get cold. We do have a bit of snow, but it's not, not as it's cold not, as no. And other parts of the world, right? Yeah. So, up, like, even for me, like, yeah, you get the minus, you know, 25 wind chill days Ooh. here and there in January, but they're not the norm. But if you were up further north in Canada, maybe you were up in Alberta or northern parts of Ontario, you could get even cooler than that. So, you can feel the cold in this movie and the relationship between the two characters really carries this film and emily blunt is an excellent actress and she shows it in this film yeah. uh scotty i know you've seen it yeah, uh, actually you talked me into told me about it this week to check it out so i watched it and yeah great fucking movie like yeah. i wasn't sure how i uh about emily blunt's character at first but as yeah. the story yeah. progresses i'm going okay yep like it makes sense why she is the way she is yeah, she's kind of bitchy. Um, yeah. Not a nice person at first, right? But you grow to understand why. Matt, have you seen it? I haven't. No, no. It's, it's another one I haven't seen. I, yeah, it's Winchell. it's fun. It's a good short watch. It's like only an hour and a half long, which is nice. Sometimes you don't feel like watching two and a fucking half hour movies. So like, this is a nice, perfect amount. Um, it's a good little relationship ghost story. So Winchill 2007 for anyone who hasn't checked it out yet. Good stuff. Yeah, great movie. All right. All right. So my number four, I decided to go with a winter horror film instead of Christmas for this one. And that is We Are Still Here from 2000. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, this movie, when you're saying feel, you feel the cold, like this one, it just feels like for Michigan style, middle of January, just feels cold mm -hmm. outside and just like the way it is. And this is just one of those like really just violent ghost stories. You don't get a lot of like extreme violent ghost stories. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of like a lot of jump scares in most of these types of films, not in this. And like, and I love every character in this, like Barbara Crampton going through her grief, like does a freaking fantastic job being like the mother that lost her son and this and that, like, and how she is just kind of processing everything. And then you get the incredible special effects with the way the ghosts look and the way like the violence is portrayed on screen. But like um, the one thing that I, I brought it up when we reviewed this on our show was the thing that I love about it is, you know, most ghosts you feel a chill when they're near you 
Not mm. in this film. When the ghosts are around, you feel heat and like everything's hot because these ghosts were burned alive. Mm-hmm. So the, like, and they represent burnt, charred corpses and just like, it is just a freaking awesome, creepy ass horror film. And then I also got to give a shout out to Larry Fessenden, especially when he gets, spoiler alert, gets possessed. And the way he's talking and acting in that is just so fucking creepy. And yeah. it's, yeah, one of my, like, when this movie came out in 2015, it has just gone up every time I've watched it. And I've watched it at least five times now. And I fucking love this movie so much. Yeah, it's a sick film. It's and sick. I, it is. yeah. Have you, have you seen it, Matt? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I, I rate it highly too. Very scary. Yeah, really spooky. Oh, but, and like, I also got to say, like, it's, and it, I love the fact that it gives nods to Lucio Falci. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely. That, freaking amazing that you don't see that much in modern day horror like a nod to the old italian gore we, master we, we need we need more of that definitely yes <laughs> i think the point you made about the cold is really valued though scott when you look at the outside interior shots or when that couple's driving in or when they're trying to flee or she's trying to flee it's it you really do get the vibe of the coldness and the isolation yeah. of this film uh, and it, it kind of adds to the grieving in the film as well, too, right? The mm. film is about grief. I think everyone knows that. But it's it's a really good pick. I didn't even think of it. So awesome yeah. pick for this. Yeah, good shot. Yep. This is uh, one that I, like a lot of the winter horror films that don't uh, represent Christmas are usually what I tend to watch during the January season. Just because yeah. like that is like the usually the coldest month here in Michigan. So it's like, yeah. yep, let's watch like the winter horror films of like just being cold. Because I'm some... cold and yeah. we're cold, yeah. and you guys will be cold <laughs> watching films, right? Exactly. So, um, Matt, how about you? What is your number four? My number four. Now, this film, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about, and I don't know why I stumbled across this one. Uh, but it's from 2017, and it's an Icelandic film called "I Remember You." Hmm. Mm. Heard of this one? I no. Not. It's by Oscar Thor Axelson. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great name. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's basically, it's about a, a couple that goes to to Iceland uh, or, or to an island uh, just off Iceland to set up a a, a home in this, uh, this village, which a lot of, I think everybody is pretty much gone. But they're, they're basically setting up in, in this place and it's, it's you know, in Iceland, so it's got this cold setting, it's bleak, it's, you know, got that feeling of isolation. Um, and basically it's a very, uh, it's more of a thriller, really, horror thriller, but it's more of a mystery about what these two, uh, what this couple, what they're experiencing, you know, while, while setting up their, their home. And, you know, they're going around the village and what's, you know, basically what's occurring. I don't really want to say too much because yeah, it, it's one of those, those films I, I really want people to watch mm-hmm. uh, and, and give some time to. Because it was uh, in my top, it was in my top five films of 2017. Um, and as I say, nobody's, I, I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. Um, so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. There's plenty of twists and stuff, but it's, yeah. A really really good film yes i remember you from 2017 i actually awesome. just went and edited it on my watch list on letterbox to remind me to check this out because yeah i am very curious about this one now yeah so it's, it's, you know icelandic films how many icelandic films have you seen not too many like maybe too... two maybe <laughs> yeah no it's 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 a really good one uh well worth a watch for sure awesome oh, i will definitely want to check it out you've sold me good stuff good stuff get it watched we will for sure um, it's always good when people bring new stuff to the table. It's like, sorry, not, it's just like, ah, Christmas, which is great. But I really appreciate that you brought an international film as well. I, 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 well, that's how I thought. I thought I better throw in something which is a bit more, you know. No one's going to give you a basic obvious. pitch now, Matt. Everyone's going to know <laughs> you're the man. Um, <laughs> mine is my next number four, or my number four is a little basic, I think. Uh, but that's okay. I, I really like the film. And it is Frozen 2010 by Adam Green, not the Disney Uh one. I hate when I tell people I like Frozen and they automatically go to the Disney film. (laughs) But uh, Frozen by Adam Green, and it is from 2010. For those who haven't seen the movie, it's about a couple and a best friend who go skiing at a ski resort. And they decide to do one last run and due to miscommunication, they get left out on a ski lift. Uh, thinking people will come back and they do not. And it becomes a fight for for survival. What I really appreciated about this film is this could happen. 
Um, yeah. I've seen many ski resorts in Ontario and I don't think people would be left there for as long as they were left there, but I could see people get accidentally lean left on, on lifts for sure. Uh, I could see the miscommunication that happens in this movie actually happening. Uh, I always love the wolves in this movie because I didn't believe they were actually wolves for the longest time. Apparently they were, but there's one scene where one just sits with his paws crossed and it like, they were like, just leave it. <laughs> like we want it to look vicious, but at this point we don't fucking care. Just leave them because you know, it's hard to train animals to do what you want. I do think they're more husky. I don't know how you train wolves to do that, but anyway, uh, I've just loved the character contrast in this movie and what they try the different attempts they make to live and how some of those attempts have some devastating consequences and for a very basic set you are again relying on acting line delivery and those characters ability to make us believe there is a threat and i think the three of these characters do it incredibly i know scott's seen the film have you seen the film matt i have indeed yeah i watched it uh yeah this summer actually um nice. it was yeah, it was part of the uh, summer series uh, oh cool so yeah so i watched that i'm not the biggest fan i've got to be honest um off the oh, fucking <laughs> show matt yeah. we don't bye. care about your top three later now. cheers there bye-bye um <laughs> no my my only issue with the film is just i don't i'm not keen on situational horrors does that make sense you know yeah, and for people, sure ah you know these single location things I, yeah i'm not a fan and i'm just annoyed it's like for goodness sakes just throw the ski at the bloody at the you know the vehicle coming up the yeah. up the hill the smoke yeah. throw your ski at it but cry out loud yeah anyway absolutely and you know what it's absolutely fair to have a different opinion right like <laughs> my no stance whatever you know i want someone to love a movie that i love and i i think when i think of winter films i just think that really represents the winter very well oh, yeah, absolutely it's right and they make film. a lot of poor decisions you're right there is yeah. a very poor decision making that is made in that film where you yeah are yelling at the tv but maybe that's what they wanted well, it's probably for people they to get so frustrated right they succeeded in in that respect <laughs> certainly with me anyway matt had to drink five beers to make up for those bad <laughs> decisions that they were all making it's like now i got to go to the pub to deal with this fucking movie um what about you scotty what are your thoughts uh, I, I do enjoy this film quite a bit, um, but like, and yeah, like the whole decision making that like, I think that's just a part of the uh, subgenre of the survival horror isolation, because you watch these movies and you're sitting here going, well, yeah, why wouldn't you fucking do that? Do that. You're screaming at the screen. But, you know, these people are in the situation and always making the wrong decisions. Hence why they're in the situation they're in in the first place most of the time. Like Scott and, and I making wrong decisions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my life choice. <laughs> we could absolutely have a horror movie that's situational. It's called New Year's Eve 2022. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I am It'll be a film footage video. film. <laughs> it will be Scott and I going live on Facebook. <laughs> the <laughs> the bad decisions. And Matt will be like, God damn it, guys. Why can't you just do things properly? <laughs> I hate fucking situational horror. Anyway. Uh, but Brilliant. yeah, I do enjoy this one. And this is one again. Uh, this is definitely a film that you feel the cold, like you were bringing up earlier. Yeah. Like it, That's true. And it yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. is like, yeah, you're stranded and you're screwed. It's like, there isn't many options you have at that point, like just being up there. So it's like, yeah. Then I do have to agree with the wolves. They do so, so damn cute. Oh my God. You know, anything with <laughs> animals, I'm just like, oh, there was animals in it. I like it. Like, honestly, it's a problem. But that is my number four. So let's move over to Scotty's number three. All right. So my number three, um, I am going to bring in a movie from 1980. And it is also another character study that we also covered on our Christmas episode last year. And that is Christmas Evil. Oh, Ooh. nice. Uh, basically a man that is way too obsessed with Christmas and basically thinks he is Santa Claus in his own head and does some really creepy things like right in the beginning where you're watching him just like watching these kids and writing down if they're naughty or nice by him just spying on them, which right away is just fucking creepy. And uh, but like, yeah, he, he takes his obsession way too far and like he eventually snaps because one too many bad things happen to him throughout this film and he just goes on a killing spree and like but at the same time once again this is just one of those like uh deep character studies of like you know how far is obsession like what like how far is someone willing to take their obsession with something and like how much can a man take before he fucking goes nuts 
and I love this film. Like you feel bad for him at the same time you're angry at him from being the way he is, but at the same time you're just like you can't help but have sympathy for the way this guy is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good once, movie for that. That's like it, once again it has to deal with trauma. Yeah. Is, it, is this one where he's getting chased through the streets? Yes. Like he's yes. uh he gets in a van and yeah. he's right trying to run away because he's getting the cops after him and stuff that's like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you a fan, Matt? Or do you I'm also just... want to feel the joy from this as well? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I have seen it. I can't remember what, what I gave it. I'm just looking at my notes. Uh I saw it a, quite a long time ago. Fair enough. So, uh, so I can't remember what, what I gave it. It's pretty normal. I watched it last year and I don't overly remember a lot of it. Like I would probably have to go back and listen to our episode and me talking about it to have a better idea what I thought. I think I enjoyed it. You did. I think I would. I felt really bad for the main character, but it didn't stand out to me. But it's a very popular Christmas film. And I think it, it really, it did try to capitalize on the whole obsession and what happens when someone breaks really, really mm, well, mm. right? Yeah, no, it's, yeah. It, I, I do, I do, I'm just trying to go through my head now. I do remember it, actually. And it was, yeah, no, it's, it's a decent film, decent film. Well, yeah, well, you can well. definitely tell I have, a, I have a thing for character studies like that. <laughs> character studies and relationship horror, Scott's like, son of a bitch, I'm in. It's a sin, right? I just eat that up. He's like, give me more. <laughs> All right, Matt, bring us in. What's your number three? Ooh, my number three is another film which I've just seen this week, uh, which is 1997's Jack Frost. <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah. I'm so oh. happy to hear. I love that. This movie's jokes. It's <laughs> <She's> hilarious. <laughs> oh, I was just like, uh, I basically had a list of films. I thought, All right, I need to watch these. These, you know, get into the Christmas vibe. I need to be watching these. And yeah, and I saw that I saw this one. I thought I just put it in on on on, my, on my, you know on the TV, and I just saw the poster. And I was like, this looks like my kind of shit. Uh, it's hilarious. It's such a great, it's just such a great idea. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's basically a guy, a bad guy. It's kind of like um like Shocker, yes, isn't it? It's like the same concept as Shocker, you know guy who's bad gets mutated and then transformed into something else this is obviously gets transported into a, a snowman a killer snowman lo- no less yes. i mean geez horror fans um, you've got to be watching this a, a, you know a snowman that's going around killing people what's not to love it's gory it's just hilarious it's just yeah my it's some great team. kills in it and yeah, i love really there's another jack frost with michael keaton we're not talking about yeah. that jack frost, <laughs> no, 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 everybody no, no. we're talking about a much lower budget much more cheesy fucking just the snowman coming to life and fucking shit up in this town and it is awesome and they know I the type it. of movie they made too like they oh were like God. all on yeah. board with it yeah and I, I it's like very much like the child's play vibe right like of the spirit yes. being put into a snowman and the snowman coming to life and just like fucking up this town i love it i don't know if scott's a big fan i love it i think it's hilarious i it's one of those where kind of like the, it's a like thanks killing to me where it's like i dislike it but at the same time i can't help but watch it every couple of years Mm-hmm. and just get a little bit of a chuckle out of it but at the same time i'm going why why am i watching this this is so bad and dumb but at the same time i can't help but have fun with it okay. like it's one of those weird just like it's a bad movie that knows it's bad and rolls with it like t- tusk <laughs> yes oh, oh man that's <laughs> another that. fucking oh man that I, movie's so I, funny. I know I, I heard your uh, review. I had to throw that in there. Oh, that's all right. I don't. It's a. It's just fucking hilarious. The making fun of the Canadian stereotypes, and then him and the wall. Anyway, we won't get into it. But him and that fucking walrus suit, and they fight. Crazy shit. <laughs> See, like it's just dumb shits. I feel like um, in life, you have two types of movies. You have movies that you take seriously, like something like Black Christmas where you're like oh man this this is like a really deep film and like it has a lot of messages and then you got fucking jack frost where you're like this movie is completely ridiculous and it makes no sense but it's just Good and Jack Fox and his like wise crack and shit he does throughout it oh uh, it, all i gotta say is time. though avoid part two avoid oh i haven't seen part two <laughs> sounds like i got my christmas eve watch yeah, list ready right, to go. Yeah. <laughs> well we'll just say jack frost goes someplace tropical <laughs> oh man i'll just really? be jealous I also wish I was going someplace tropical. Uh, Well, thank you for bringing that in. I'm really glad you brought in Jack Frost. That's amazing. 
Um, my next movie is from 2007 as well. I actually watched this movie by uh, chance back I uh, for when I first got Netflix. And you remember when Netflix first came out? It, like they had kind of like lower run movies on it, right? Like yeah. you didn't get like the prime movies, the really good stuff. You still had video stores then. Uh, but this movie was called P2. Oh, and nice. I saw the cover oh, and I was like, yes. hey, you know what? I'll check this shit out. You know, whatever. It looks like a slasher. And I think I was doing schoolwork because I was in one of my many degree programs I was doing at the time. And I was watching this shit and I was like, fuck, this movie is lit. This chick is awesome. And the basis of it is there's a woman who's a workaholic who kind of reminds me of me. Very career obsessed. That's her focus. She's supposed to go home for Christmas. She's working late in the office on Christmas Eve. And the security guard is obsessed with her and decides that he's going to spend a Christmas with her and chaos ensues. And it's this crazy game of cat and mouse that occurs within this parking garage. Now, obviously you have to suspend your disbelief. There's stuff that happens in it where you'd be like, all right, that probably wouldn't actually happen, but it's a fucking horror movie. That's what we do for all horror movies. And the, and the dancing that he does with her, the blue mm-hmm. Christmas, always sticks in my head i still remember that scene perfectly and it's still on netflix so for anyone who hasn't checked out this movie i totally recommend watching it you guys are nodding i take it you've both seen it matt you've seen it indeed yeah it's good 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 film classic classic awesome. you know christmas eve film she's stuck in there and i, I love that bit when it, um and the guy drives the car into the uh into the other dude Oof, god yeah multiple times <laughs> brutal, right. brutal. Um, but yeah I actually just watched this for the first time last year and oh, okay. completely slipped my mind that this was a Christmas movie or this probably would have been at least in my honorable mentions but I completely forgot all about this movie so I'm glad you brought this one to the table because it is really fucking good yeah awesome I'm glad you guys both dig it so everyone is still available on Netflix go watch it if you haven't had a chance to and then Sweeney the deal with Jack Frost too because Scott has praised <laughs> how good it is <laughs> oh right oh god all right scotty what's your number two and i swear to god if it's gremlins two we're ending our podcast and i'm joining <laughs> Kat, Matt and kate moving forward i already told you no gremlins two i'm saving that for a special top five. Oh, okay <laughs> but no my number two i'm going back to a winter horror and not a christmas one and it is from 2008 and one of my all-time favorite vampire movies, and that is Let the Ooh, Right One In. I good. freaking love this film. It is uh, such a unique take for uh, vamp- vampirism. And the main girl, I think was a character named Ellie or Ella, I think something like that. Um, but yeah, like these little kid actors, just freaking incredible. And it yeah. is such a mm. dark undertone of like, you know, a vampire being a 200 year old vampire being trapped in a little girl's body and like the the older adult familiar that she has while hinted at is more from what i heard in the books is more like he is a pedophile and she basically is just keeping him alive or basically saying you know what you're gonna be my familiar and uh if you don't like it well i i'm going to let everybody know that you are a pedophile and so she basically like, you know, obviously that's part of the book, but at the same time, like knowing that and it hints at it in the movie. And it is another film that is also extremely cold feeling when you're watching it. And like, once again, foreign films like this, they don't shy away from tough subjects, subject matters. No, and yeah, they don't. Agree. Foreign films are willing to go down that road. Yeah, and also I love the fact that it like kind of like takes on like a aspect of like looking at bullying because yeah. a poor Oliver gets bullied like crazy in that film. Yeah, he does. He does. And once again, kind of like kind of snaps because of it. Yeah. No, it's 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 a great, great film. It's it's, you know, from 2008. That's Swedish, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, no, it, that was actually it was actually my 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 number two pick. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, so I have to pick something else. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great great film. Um, and if you haven't checked it out, make time to watch this one because it really is something. It's just so beautifully shot. Um, and as you say, it's just got that real cold feel to it. Just, yeah. just, just, just an, an oppre- oppressive feel to it. Yes. You just feel as you know they're kind of stuck in this place, and it's just just feels cold and oppressive it's yeah no it's it's a very good shout that one definitely yeah but it, it makes you like you look at it and go like it even like even though they're like in an apartment complex like oliver is um it still feels like they're so isolated because you just don't see a lot of people around and it's just but i think that's also 
that winter setting is always makes for everything feeling like you're isolated yeah and i yeah. love that about this film like it is just such a good vampire film like and yeah i watched it i'd probably say 2011 was when i first seen it and it instantly shot up to one of my all-time favorite vampire movies mm. oh yeah it's it's highly rated I, I don't even know what it's called imdb i'm sure it's damn high yeah and i actually even have to say uh the american remake let me in actually isn't that bad either like that's i that's a remake oh, that yes, i would recommend of course yes they have uh, done a remake uh, very, yeah. i haven't seen that i haven't seen the remake but uh, yeah i'd say it's not bad obviously it's not as good as let the right one in but it's still not bad good stuff good stuff awesome so do you need some time to pick a new one, Matt? No, I can. Well, no, I've, I've got others, um, but they're a bit more, uh, let's say, generic. That's OK. We're, we're all not, generic. We're not, yeah, we okay. this is. Yeah, we bring whatever you like. It can be generic as possible. So, okay. you know, my honorable mentions. Uh, well, I'm just going to go with The Shining. Uh, mm, nice. That's a great one for snow and cold. That's perfect. Well, you know, it's it's you know, it's it's a classic. Everybody's seen The Shining, uh, Stanley Kubrick from 1980. It's just it's the perfect the wintry feel film for me. Um, it is it's just everything about it. It's just the isolation, the characters, what they go through, and Jack Nicholson's performance. It's creepy as hell. It's weird as hell. Some weird mm-hmm. shit going thrown in there. The imagery. It's uh, it's just a classic. It really is a classic. Um, you know, it's just brutal at times. The axe hitting. Uh, I was going to go Scott Scotty Carruthers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Scatman yeah. Carruthers. Yeah, Scatman Carruthers. Uh, I think that's brilliant. Uh, but no, it's just the performances. I mean, his performance in that Jack Nicholson's performance. It's um, it's his best performance by far. Yes, I think absolutely agreed. Uh, but yeah, movie. it's just it just has that winter feel um, to it, and the score is amazing. I just love that intros. It just kind of kind of pan on in, you know, and the music starts just ooh, creepy as hell. Everything about this is like just it is a masterpiece horror film. Like, it is it's, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely. yeah, this was actually uh, in contention for my honorable mentions or top five. I had it on the list, but I'm like, I have a feeling someone may bring this one to the table. So I took it off. That's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. I actually didn't even think about The Shining. So I'm really glad that you guys both thought about it. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Isolation, winter horror at its finest. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. No, for sure. Right. Um, for me, this one is going to be super popular and I don't fucking care because it's awesome. It's Krampus 2015. Yes. I don't know what more we need to say. Uh, if you haven't seen this Christmas horror fan, the fan film now, get out, get out of the rock or out from under the rock you're living under because it is by far one of the best Christmas horror movies that have ever been made. Yep. Um, yeah. which makes me wonder why it's not my number one, but we'll get to that. Mm. Uh, I appreciate the fuck out of this movie. Like <laughs> I think most people do like I, the acting, the line delivery, the setup, how cold it feels watching it. Uh, the unhappy, happy ending, however you want to look at it. It is such a fucking solid film. And the character actors that they got in this are just awesome. The kids are awesome. Everyone is awesome. It's such an easy movie to watch again and again, even if you know the outcome. I'm going to let both of you talk about it because I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, this is... This is the most Christmassy feeling Christmas horror film I think that is out there. Like it nails yeah. everything about it. And when I describe this to people that may not have seen it, I always say, imagine Christmas vacation blended with gremlins. And like yeah, that yes, is what you yeah. get. Cause it's like the it is the chaoticness of gremlins, but it is the family stress of Christmas as well from Christmas vacation. And it's just like that perfect blend. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's a great, it's a great, great film. I, I've, I only saw it for the first time last year, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Last Christmas, I thought, oh, I need to get my Christmas movies in. Uh, and that came up and yeah, I loved it. Loved it. It's a great, great film. And I love the design of, of Krampus uh, yes. himself. I think it's very, very cool. And like cool. I, one thing I got to give about this film too is the sound design too. Because like when you see Krampus for the first time on the rooftop and you just see him running and hopping on top of each roof, chasing yeah. that girl, mm-hmm. like the sound design of when he hits the mm-hmm. roof and just that thud that he makes, like it just vibrates the whole house when you're watching it if you have a good sound system. And it just, and once again, another film that does 
you feel freaking cold watching it. Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Michael Darty just I want him to do a holiday movie for every holiday out there now because he just yeah. nails the holiday se- season. Yeah, no good he show. just knows how to make the good movies, right? So Krampus, if you haven't seen it, everyone, they've blown it. Please go watch Krampus. I am so glad right before we started recording, I'm like, I have a feeling someone's going to have Krampus. It wasn't my top five. I swapped it around. Nice. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well, and I was going to swap it out too, but I'm like, fuck that shit. It's a great fucking movie. Yep. Krampus it should be watched by everyone. That's a horror Damn right. Man, right? Damn exactly. Right. All right. The time we've all been waiting for, Scotty. What is your number one? Well, speaking of, you know, this is a popular movie that, you know, everyone will probably expect me to have on my list. And fuck it. Why would I take it off my list? It is my all time favorite fucking movie in the world. And that is fucking Gremlins. Yeah. 1984. <laughs> of course, it's going to be my number one movie of, of winter slash horror. This is my Christmas Eve slash Christmas Day tradition every year. I've granted, I watch it multiple times a year, every year, but it's like I have to watch it on those days. Like it is everything about this film. Fucking love it. It has the Christmas feel to it. Like it's, like people will argue if it's Christmas or not. I mean, for Christ's sakes, the town's decorated in Christmas. How, how yeah, would he argue yeah. that it's not Christmas? He gets the yeah. Mogwai as yeah. a Christmas gift. Gizmo is a Christmas gift. Exactly. <laughs> Christmas music is playing throughout it. It's and a Christmas it's like, film. It's there's Christmas people that have film. argued it, and I don't know why. Yeah, those people are just arguing for the sake of looking important. There's no way yeah. to argue that. So, But some of the best puppetry ever done. I fucking love the design of the Gremlins love gizmo he is so fucking adorable and i want one i don't care about all the rules i would do my best to keep him just safe and just yeah. have him as my little companion everywhere i went but uh, fuck yeah, yeah what more can i say about this movie everybody knows i blow fucking gremlins like crazy but yeah <laughs> it is my number one film fucking love it and yep i don't care how basic is, it is because that is, is my is love. it is it your number one film of all time it is. Everything. is it? Oh, yes. I oh, don't give that away, it. Scott. It may not be Scott's <laughs> number one film of all time, everybody. He's lying. <laughs> Scott likes a lot of films. So many. I do like a lot of films. And there it's are a, a couple change. that would be interchangeable. But yes, yes. Gremlins is way up there. <laughs> way up there. I'll great, great, that. great, great choice. Great film. It really is. And it's, it's a great gateway film for kids to get into into horror as well exactly because yep. like yeah there is like horrific scenes in it like the kitchen mm. scene like, yeah yeah but at the same time like it is definitely more child friendly but uh, yeah there are like some very horrific moments in it and yeah like you know i i love the idea that this was originally going to be a rated r horror film straight up until steven spielberg's going let's kind of tone it back a bit joe dante you just just <laughs> chill a little bit on this it's kind of bringing some of the family <laughs> Right. right absolutely no you're right scotty as much as i tease scotty about this film it is a phenomenal film it is well made well produced well acted for what it is you know the puppeteering is incredible for the time and it stands up today yeah you know yeah. it does stand the test of time gremlins is a great film in 2021 and this is the only time that scott will hear me say that so i am repeat i'm gonna record <laughs> this and it, in our well, year it, is, end it show, is being recorded scott that's but, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> i am gonna i am gonna clip this out and then anytime you talk shit about gremlins now i'm gonna place this in with you saying how wonderful the movie is <laughs> nice. so matt what's your number one ah right my number one uh it is my favorite film of all time um and i hope this isn't your n- number one heather but I'm going to go for 1982's The Thing. Mm. Awesome yes. choice. Awesome it's, choice. Again, it's another, it's, it's a, it is a classic, but it's just the epitome of wintry isolation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's just the ultimate film for me. It has everything I want. It's got paranoia. It's got that wintry isolation feel. It's got body horror, which is just next level the special effects geez you know at that time 1982 and the shit that they were making then was so far ahead of its time um and it hasn't been beaten in in my opinion the special effects just has has not been beaten uh i i I love it i just love it i love the characters in it kurt russell's great Uh, just everybody in it it's just just awesome i can't yeah you know it's just and it is it's the ultimate winter film for me i watch it every every winter that's um, awesome it just I, yeah just it speaks for itself i can't awesome you know yeah say much more fucking masterpiece uh once again this was in my top five but i had a feeling someone else is going to bring it to the table and i swapped it out to my honorable mentions 
Um, nice. But yes, one of my all time favorite John Carpenter films. And well, when we were talking about how like I have many number one horror films, this is one of them. <laughs> yeah, I everything you said, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Like the special effects are incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, just once again, another film that I watched around January because it's just it stands you the feel test the time. Cold. It does. Right. And, and even the 1952 yeah. one is in the winter, yeah. uh, you know, the original and I, I think the remake is phenomenal. The original is not bad yeah. in its own right, right? It's an entertaining enough film for 1952. And, like, it's pretty good. And but we yeah, can't go I agree. without... Oh, sorry, Heather. No, go ahead. Uh, I was saying, we can't go uh, without saying how beautiful that fucking hair of Kurt Russell's is. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. Like, that's actually why we all love the film. It has nothing to do with the special effects, nothing to do with any of that. It's the hair. That beautiful uh, and, and, the, and the fact he's drinking Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah uh, and the fact that he's drinking, Matt and I are already, like, fucked Wait. in the village we're in. Like, oh my God, this movie's the best. Uh, but no, that's a really great movie to bring to the table. Honestly, great film, too. Uh, that's not my number one. My number one was very much more basic mm. than that. Ooh. It is 2000. 2015 is a Christmas horror story. Ah, oh, I absolutely yeah. love this anthology. And I think the story that stands out to me the most is the Santa one. Mm-hmm. Because when you get the reveal, it very few things shock me and make me go, oh man, that's dark. That made me be like, oh fuck, that's dark. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I I really appreciated their their ability to go there and be that dark with that specific story that stands out. Um, and the actor that plays Santa Claus as well, too. I um, can't remember his name right now, but he's been in a lot of different films. He's had kind of, I don't know, he's a character actor, but excellent, excellent little anthology, a Christmas horror story. I can't believe I skipped over it for years. So I thought the cover looked cheesy. Mm-hmm. Biggest regret because that film is not cheesy. It is fucking dark. Have the two of you seen it? Oh, yeah. Well, we talked about it on oh, yeah, we've uh, talked anthology about it, right? episode. Yes, we have. Right. But, uh, but, but yeah, I love it. And you, Matt? I haven't. No. Oh, dude, you got to watch oh, it this yeah. year. Watch oh, this. Dude, is an good. awesome Christmas horror anthology. I've yeah. just written it down, so I'm just going to add that to my list. Definitely. Yeah, ignore the cover art because the, yeah, the cover art makes it look so like sci-fi channel bullshit. Yeah, but it's a good, <laughs> solid film. Really, really good, solid um, Christmas horror film. So I'll good just go stuff. through my honorable mentions now because it's on me uh you both of you already mentioned a couple already black christmas silent night doc jack frost the only other ones i had to to respond or add to was dead end 2003 nice i think that's a really good christmas theme story uh it's about a family that goes driving and they get lost they get into a car accident and then what happens as it continues on uh silent night 2012 I actually really enjoyed yeah. this remake of the of Silent Night. It's nothing like the original concept, but it's a great slasher. I found it really entertaining. And uh, finally, uh, one that also I find absolutely hilarious and I don't take seriously at all is Santa Slay in 2000 <laughs> yeah. with Goldberg. And yeah, it's the opening good. scene where he slaughters everyone, including Fran Dresser, that I just oh. find fucking jokes like you got two types of holiday movies those that take themselves seriously like krampus and a christmas horror story and then you got stuff like jack frost and santa slay and you just have to yeah. be in the frame of mind to watch that stuff so those are my honorable mentions and i'm passing it back over to scotty excellent a lot of the movies on there like great choices and yep, yeah a bunch of mine got mentioned so i'll mention those first so Yep, I had Krampus on my list, The Thing, and uh, Christmas Horror Story were all in my honorable mentions. <clears throat> um, but the two, I have two others that did not get mentioned yet, and that is Rare Exports from 2010. Nice. Ooh, didn't yeah, know good that. One. Oh, that one I think is... Uh, it's on Shudder you know, here. Do that... you guys have Shudder in UK? Yeah. You might be on Shudder UK. Okay. But yeah, I love this movie because it's just... Uh, it's very uh, wholesome yet creepy at the same time because it's not very, like, not real horror horror. But like the idea of Santa Claus in this is very unique and uh, like and Santa's elves are very just weird and creepy, but it's just like a very interesting take on a Christmas type horror film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend this to anybody that has not seen it. Um, I think it's Norwegian. I could be wrong on that, but I guess okay. so it is uh, subtitled. But yeah, definitely give that one a watch. Um, and then the other one uh, is 2015's Black Coat's Daughter. Oh, I knew that yes. was going to be on your list. Yes. I knew it. Yep. But just because once again, the feeling of isolation and cold and this story is just so dark and creepy and 
granted you know the whole reveal of who one character actually is like halfway through the story probably could have chose someone that resembled that person a little more but you know i'll forgive that because the story (laughs) itself was really fucking good and yeah it is one of those it's just like very haunting and full of dread yeah yeah sure i i I literally watched this uh about a month ago with my 11 year old daughter (laughs) oh nice nice (laughs) (laughs) whoops yeah, that's been a bit of a mistake with that one. Hey, you know what? It's okay. You just kind of have conversations about it afterwards. That's exactly. Right. I was watching Pulp Fiction with my dad at 11. So you know what? All right. Yeah. I watched The Exorcist yeah. with my mom at the age of 10. So yeah, you know, it's fine. What Now, what about your honorable mentions, Matt? Is there anything you want to um, shout out? Just a couple. Uh, Dead Snow. Oh, yeah. Dead Snow. Yeah. 2007. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's good just one. A, f- a fun zombie movie. Yeah. Uh, I think that's another Norwegian one again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I believe so. I think yeah. so, yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, a uh, group of young'uns go out to the uh, go out to, to a hut to kind of hang out for, for some, what are they, sledging or something? Or skiing, I think. Skiing or something, like that, yeah. yeah. And then suddenly they've, you know, unleashed the zombie, Nazi zombie horde <laughs> uh, upon themselves. I mean, what else do you need apart from not Nazi zombies? Absolutely, right? Uh, yeah, great fun. Uh, what else? Uh, and the other one, because you kind of mentioned the other ones that I was going to pick, but also uh, Better Watch Out. Yes. Yeah, it's a fun one. Which it's is really good fun, really yeah. well acted. Uh, yeah, good fun, basically. Um, this girl's babysitting this young man. And this young man turns out to be something that he isn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite, Say quite a minimum. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's a, a good, 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 fun sort of Christmas movie to watch. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got, really. Awesome. Well, we had a good variety. Honestly, we yeah, had a definitely. few that we all mentioned, in, but our top fives were actually pretty different. Yeah. Yeah. I was very impressed by that. Like, I was wondering, like, because, you know, when we do a holiday theme or winter theme, like, there is only so many you, you can choose from that does narrow our list down. But I, I'm shocked that we all had like something, a nice variety on here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Matt. Before we, uh, before we end today, we would love for you to promo where everyone can listen to your podcast, as well as any other works you have going on that you may want to promote. I don't know. You're going to the pub later and you want to let everyone know. I don't know. You're <laughs> yeah. DJing at like another hot club next weekend. You can promo it here. Oh, that's very yeah. kind. Well, th- thank you both uh, ever so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's been a real joy and a real pleasure. And we must have you on our show. Oh, oh please. absolutely. We'd love to. Uh, love we'll, to. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you uh, in the new year, definitely. We'd love to have you both on. So That would be and great. I, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll be able to fit Kate in some some other time. Yeah, that's Cinema, the place that we cannot speak of. <laughs> uh, the name we cannot speak. Um, yeah. maybe it's like we'll Voldemort. Time off, right? It is, you know what? It probably is like Voldemort. They sound like they're like fucking Voldemort. Uh, but where can we find your podcast? So yes, our podcast is the Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds podcast. Uh, find us on the usual places. I usually let Kate do this, but it's me. Uh, uh, find us on a- uh, Anchor, Apple, Google. Uh, Spotify, Stitcher, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're on Facebook, uh, forward slash groups, forward slash uh, Edenism Pod. Uh, also on in, uh, Instagram, uh, Edenism Underslung Podcast, and email at uh, edspotlessminds at gmail.com. Awesome. And that's about it. Awesome. So please, everyone who's listening, if you haven't had a chance already to check out their podcast, please do. Please check out Kate on the Dark Parade. Um, as well with Mr. Bo Ramsdale and also all the work that I understand. Have you been involved in summer series as well, Matt? Uh, not well, not really. I mean, I just did a uh, what they call the listeners, you know, listeners bit at the end. Okay. So yeah, but basically, I don't know the, oh, Christ, I don't remember what the hell it's called. But anyway, just just yeah, you've yeah, been a little bit. You've I been a side a bit. character. You've been I've a been side a, piece. Yeah, I've been the side piece. Kate Kate's been a main uh, main player in that right. one. But uh, I think I get bumped up to to next year, so I may be doing a bit more for that next year. Nice. We'll oh well, congratulations! I hope you Thank enjoy you. We'll it. It sure is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Definitely. Definitely. Well, that's awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here again. For everyone who's listening, as you know, we've we moved away from our usual format this month. We wanted to have our very special international guests. Uh, Matt was our first. And then we'll be having our Aussie C words at the uh, <laughs> at the end of our, our, I'll just say it, our favorite cunts. 
Um, <laughs> listener oh, discretion is advised. Brilliant. But they call themselves that all the time. I know it's, they do. It's constant. If you listen to Horror for Dummies, they use that word and it's just used differently in Australia than it's used in North America. So I can say it about those two and it is fine because they use yeah. it to describe them. Exactly. We um, actually have a Facebook group where we call each other those words, but we give something else beforehand. Like I'm Canadian C word. Um, <laughs> so like, yeah, like we have a little chat group that we use. Yeah, and um, I'm, I'm the American C word. <laughs> right. And Tim and is the- Scott's C word. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel is Heather's mine. C word. <laughs> right? So, um, and we talk about wrestling and stuff like that in there too, because they also have a wrestling podcast now. Good stuff. Right. And then also we'll have Lance Lanford from the uh, Horror Week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um lance's episode will be released to patreon first um so if you are not a member of legion patreon please sign up today um but you can follow all our other podcast feeds uh including all our other podcast friends from legion by just subscribing to legion podcasts on any of the services that you would subscribe to we really look forward to you joining the legion family uh, and again, join us. Join us. <laughs> and I look forward to meeting up at uh, the pub one day with Matt and we can watch some yeah, football, right. have some Fuck drinks yeah. and call other people C words. Uh, that's fine. Right. In England. <laughs> that's guaranteed. Is, is that OK? Like, can I just Absolutely, be like, yeah, this yeah, is my, sure. my C. Is that OK? Like, <laughs> hey, I'm you... happy with that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's definitely, fine. Yeah, yeah. I oh, love yeah. when you guys say shag and fancy and stuff like that. I love that shit. <laughs> like, well, you know, Canada's, you know, we're connected to England, right? Oh, we yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gender and all that shit. So, yeah, we're blood brothers and sisters. Yep. Yeah, we are. Yeah, right. And I'm the traitor amongst. Yeah, three. not like the fucking betrayer over here. Ooh, the tea, <laughs> oh, the tea tags. Oh, yeah. Y'all ain't gonna tell us what to do. We American. <laughs> American have my gun. <laughs> um, but no, as okay, always. Uh, <laughs> Fuck yeah. Team America, oh man, what a great movie that is! <laughs> love it, love it. We can talk about Team America all the time, but uh, Scotty, why don't you see us out? All right, well, thank you everyone for listening to our. Well, what is this? Episode forty-eight. I think it's forty-seven or forty-seven. Yeah, we'll have to look. We I, don't know. 47, 48, everyone. It's your best guess. It's all to blending together at. now at yeah. this point. <laughs> but yeah, thank you again for listening, and thank you very much, Matt, for joining us and. Kate, sorry you couldn't be here, but, you know, we'll hopefully get to work with you at some point down the road. Yeah. Um, to everyone that is listening, thank you as always. Um, we should hopefully have another episode out before Christmas time for our main feed. I can't remember, but in we the will. meantime. Okay, we'll have, we'll, we'll okay. have Lance and we'll have this one. Okay, yeah. Well, I'll say I thought Lance was the yeah okay yeah never mind I'll keep going <laughs> but uh <laughs> keep going Scott it's okay just keep going keep your head in the game I got, I got this <laughs> you got it until next time everyone have a very blistery cold wonderful time of year and unpleasant dreams see ya <laughs> see ya.